Welcome back, knitters. This is Jana with Pearl Together, and we're feeling festive. So the last week or so, we've been making the Busta Bobbles. These are based on the uh, beanie, Busta Beanie pattern. I'll put the link for those down below if you missed last week's video. And then this week, I've been knitting little mini socks. Aren't they darling? Little tiny little socks. So these are just based on my basic sock cuff down method. There's really not a lot to it. I had a link uh, for some mini, some little tiny socks, um, but those were knitted back and forth flat and then seamed. I'm just not really a fan of that. I chose to use uh, my Chow Goo set of tiny sock needles that are in a size zero or 2.0 millimeters. You could use double points. You can use a little bit bigger yarn if you want to. It, you know, unless you really think the elves are coming to wear them, it doesn't have to fit anybody, so. So cute. So with these, I just cast on 16 stitches. Okay, so let's get started. To knit my tiny sock, I've chosen just some green and white contrasting colors of Knit Picks Gradient Stroll that were just sock yarn leftovers. And I'm using a Chow Goo size one or two millimeter, 2.0 millimeter. And this is their uh, tiny sock set. So I'll put a link to all those things down below if you're interested. And all I've done here is cast on 16, I believe. And then I'm going to, it's in the middle of my cable because I'm going to magic loop these on my tiny circular needle, tiny in diameter, not length. I've got a long enough cable to magic loop. You could certainly do this on DPNs if you'd rather. I'm just going to divide my stitches in half as you normally would for magic loop and I'll join in the round. So I've cast on 16. If you're using DPNs, you'll just want to divide those evenly around, you know, however that works for you, whether you choose to use three DPNs or four, whether working, you know, with the fourth or the fifth one being the working needle. Now I've often showed you before how I do this. I just go make sure that these are, have the cast on edge lined up and nothing's twisted. And then I go into this first stitch as if to purl. And I just take the tail around clockwise and I'm just using my right hand needle to just draw that through. And then I'm just going to tie a square knot and join it in the round. Super simple. Then I'm just going to knit a few rounds of, um, you could do ribbing. I don't really think that's necessary for an ornament. So I'm just going to knit um, my top cuff, if you will, probably, I don't know, four to six rounds. I'm just winging this based... Um, my whole little tiny sock pattern is gonna is based on my big basic cuff down sock that I originally learned from the Folk Socks book by Nancy Bush. So the math is the same. The technique is the same whether I'm doing a tiny sock with only a cast on of 16 or I'm doing a regular adult sock with a cast on of 72. The whole premise of all this, the math, it's all the same. So this should really go pretty quick. I'm just gonna knit around I don't know, four to six to eight times, depending on how wide I want my cuff to be. And you can decide that based on your yarn and what you prefer and how you want the look of it to be. One thing I like about these needles is they're sharp. So stroll, this particular skein tends to be a little mm -hmm. splitty. Um, so if the point, you know, the needles are pointy enough that that's not an issue. Okay, so for my tiny sock cuff, I have knitted, uh, I think that was six rounds. I might have been five. Anyway, it's the it's the the length or the width, you know, the size of cuff that I prefer. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit the leg of my tiny sock in this darker contrasting color. And to join that, I'm honestly I'm just gonna start knitting with it. Um I don't think it's super important. You could tie a knot. I think what I'm gonna do is just start knitting with it and then weave in my little tail as I go, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, that's a good thing to, to realize how to do if you're ever going to do any kind of fair aisle or color work. So I just knit the first stitch, then go in to the second stitch, and then I'm going to take this tail and lay it over the needle like that and kind of hold it, hold it down with my left index finger. Wrap that as normal, but don't draw through the darker color tail. Don't draw through that tail. But what you did was you prepared that so that it can be trapped with the next wrap. See how this is going over the working yarn? The tail's going over the working yarn. So when I wrap this next stitch, it's gonna be trapped down or tacked down easily enough. So we're gonna do that again. Just lay that over, wrap your yarn as if to knit, like normal. 
And then by doing that, this tail is going to be tacked down with my next knit wrap. Okay, so I just do that, you know, a few times. And then I'm just going to knit round and round until the leg of my tiny sock is the length I want it to be. Okay, I've knitted the leg of my tiny sock, and what I chose to do was just double the width here. So if I did six rows on my cuff, then I did 12 of the dark green. I just thought thirds would be good. I don't know, it's kind of arbitrary. You could do it however you like. You could even make little, you know, stripes every other row, whatever. And if you'll notice that I just kept the white yarn going up the tube. There wasn't really any reason to cut it and then reattach it when um, this is not actually a worn sock, it's just an ornament. So I'll just put stuffing or not inside. Um, actually, I probably won't stuff it, but it's fine. The point is it's fine for the white yarn to just travel up the center. So now what I'm going to do is begin the little heel. And like I said, the math is the same. So if I'm going to knit my little heel flap across these eight stitches on the first part of my needle, and I'm just going to knit across the first, then I'm going to purl back and I'm going to, after I knit the first one, now normally you would slip the first stitch of your heel flap, but I don't want to slip that green one up. So I'll start that when I purl back. And often, when I knit socks for actual size people, <laughs> I will do that slip stitch reinforcing, and you can check that out on any of my sock videos I've done that with. So I'm gonna slip this first stitch as if to purl, and then just purl back across. Now we're just working the heel flap on this first needle, and these other stitches will just stay on the cable and sit there until we're ready to deal with them. So I'm just gonna purl my way back across here, and then I'll just go back and forth a total of um, eight times for eight stitches. So I'm going to make the eight rows, and that will be four slipped stitch edge stitches, which you'll see in just a moment. So turn your work, and again, I'm going to slip this first stitch as if to purl, and then just knit across and just continue back and forthing in that way until your heel flap is eight rows tall. Now the other thing that makes this easier is if you knit the last one through the back loop and that will turn that stitch a little bit and open it up towards the outside. So when we go to pick up those edges, it will be easier to see. All right, I mentioned knitting through the back loop when you get to the end. You don't need to do anything special on the return purl row. You're just going to simply purl all the way through to the end. And then turn your work, slip the first stitch, and go back across. So we're going to do that a total, like I said, a total of eight rows. All right, knit through the back of, through the back loop of that last one. And I think I just need to go back and forth one more time. Okay, I have eight rows of heel flap stitches, and I've slipped the first one, and I'm just going to knit across halfway, so that would be four stitches across for me. And we're just going to do a mini little heel turn here. And so we're going to slip, slip, knit. We want to decrease leaning to the left, so a slip, slip, knit. Okay then knit the next one and turn your work. Just be careful not to drop that one off. Okay, carefully. Turn your work, slip the first one, and then purl until you only have three stitches there. Actually, we should have just purled one, I think. Because what the idea is, we're going to make a mirror image. So we had one stitch left over here, so we're going to have one stitch left over here after we purl two together and purl one. So then we're going to purl these two together, purl one, all right, turn your work, being careful not to lose the stitch that's now on the right hand needle, slip the first one as if to purl, and knit until you have only two stitches left on your needle, and then we'll close this gap right here with another left leaning decrease. So slip, slip, and then knit those two together. Okay. Now we're going to turn our work, purl our way, slip the first stitch as if to purl, purl our way back until we just have the two stitches remaining. 
and we'll purl those two together just like we did we would be doing in a regular sock so it's just all a mini version okay purl those two together and it's okay if you don't have an extra one to purl all right so now we have four stitches left and we're going to work on picking up our gussets. We have our little mini heel turn there, isn't it cute? All right, after I finish my little mini heel flap, I, I'm choosing to change back to the green because I just wanted the light colored yarn to be the contrasting cuff, heel, and toe. So what I'm gonna do now is pick up those chain edge stitches and I'm gonna pick them up using the green. But first I need to go in and find those specifically those four chain edge stitches that I want to pick up. And you can see pretty plainly where they are. There's one, two, three, and then the fourth one is right here at the top. So I'm gonna put my needle in and then go and get my green yarn and just start knitting with it. Again, you can tie it if you want to. This is just an ornament though, so I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. So I'm picking up both legs of those little chain edge stitches and knitting right into there. So again, just go under both legs and knit right into there. Okay. Now, all I'm going to do now is knit right across the top of the foot or the instep stitches and then pick up the four stitches on the right side of my gusset. Now that one I'm going to give a good little tug. Now, if this were a full-size human sock, I probably would pick up an extra in the corner, in that junction, to mitigate any holes. Since it's an ornament, it's probably not terribly necessary if you just give that a little tug and tighten it up. Now, this one's really loose over here. This stitch is pretty loose because that's where I, I cut the yarn um, from before. So now I'm going to pull my magic loop through... And all these little tails, I'm just going to drape them to the back, but eventually I'm going to just stuff them down inside. Okay, I want to roll that right side gusset edge so that I can see where I want to go and pick up this first instep stitch. Underneath, again, I want to pick up underneath both legs right there. Knit right into that and give it a good little tug so that you're drawing up the stitches that are on your cable as well. You want that to be drawn up into that corner. Go into the next one, and again, I'm, I'm pulling this pretty firmly to draw that in. Okay, there's two. There's the third one. And we'll find the fourth one here. There we go. Get those tails out of my way. And there might be a fifth one here just because of the way it worked out with uh, when I had to knit back across to join up with the other side initially. So that's all right. We'll do our decreases and we'll just decrease one more um, on this side when we get there. That's fine. Not a big deal. Okay, so you wanna work this down here now so that you can knit across the top of your heel flap. So it does feel a little fiddly here with the magic loop. Now when you're magic looping a heel flap and gusset, you want to have both of your magic loops, one on the right, one on the left, and you want to have those occur um, after the top of the foot stitches. So like you don't want to have one of your loops up here and one down here or one over here and one crossways down here. You want them both at the end of the leg portion. Now I'm just going to knit around until I get to the bottom of this left gusset where I'm going to, whoopsie, where I'm going to do a decrease. Now this stitch here is pretty loose, this white one, because that's where I join. So I'm just going to snug that up a little bit and then carry on. And I want to knit until I have three stitches left on before this juncture where this cable comes out. And I'm going to do a decrease. Then I'm going to knit two together and knit one. And that's going to create a right leaning decrease. You want your decreases to lean toward the toe of your sock. Okay, so now I'm just going to knit across the leg stitches or what would be the top of the foot stitches. And then when I begin this other gusset, I'm going to do the opposite. When I begin the other gusset and I'm knitting up that, I'm going to knit one and do a slip slip knit so it leans to the left or leans toward the toe of what will be the toe of the sock. Okay, so I'll show you that in just a second. 
And the goal here is simply to get these decreased, the, the heel turn stitches and the gusset stitches, we just want those decreased back down to the original number of stitches we had, which was eight. And then our other eight are across the, across the, you know, the instep or the top of the foot. So we're going to knit one and then slip, slip, knit. So slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, and then go in underneath, which means you're knitting into the back loop of both of those. And that creates a decrease that leans to the left or toward the toe of your sock. Okay, so now I'm just going to alternate a plain round, just knit around one time, and then do another decrease round until I get back down to the original number of cast on stitches. So in my case, that would be a 16. Okay, I've finished my decreases. Now I'm just going to carry on knitting round and round until the foot of the sock is as long as I'd like it to be. Um, for me, I'll probably just make it a look, you know, rather symmetrical where I'm just probably going to do enough rounds so that it kind of matches the length of the green section here. So I don't know, maybe eight or nine rows and I'll just see if I like how it looks. Okay, I've knitted the foot of my little tiny sock about as far as I'd like it to be. I think I did 13 or 14 rows, maybe it was 12. Anyway, I'm gonna add back in the lighter colored yarn to be the toe. I'm gonna to do the same thing where I'm just gonna begin knitting with it and then I'm going to secure the tail in by trapping it behind as you would a float, just like I did before. And I'm just gonna get knit one plain round that way and then we'll do the toe decreases. So I'll knit one plain round and then we'll begin decreasing for the toe. And on this tiny of a sock, I'm probably not going to bother with the Kitchener stitch. I'm probably just going to decrease down to four stitches and then break the yarn and run it through and draw it up like a purse string. All right, now we want to begin our decreases. I'm going to begin on this right hand side and I want the decreases to point toward the center of the toe. So this will be a left leaning decrease. So I'm just going to knit one and then I'm going to slip slip knit so that my decrease leans to the left. Slip slip knit through the back loop and I'm going to knit across until I get to three stitches to the end of my needle and then knit two together knit one. So again it's exactly the same as when you're doing a full size sock. The only difference here is that I'm going to decide how quickly do you want your decreases to occur. You, normally we would knit a plain round between and I believe I will otherwise my toe will be like tiny and I, I want it to be somewhat proportional to the rest so now I'm going to turn my work and knit across the top of the foot stitches here doing the same thing. All right after my first decreased round I only have six stitches on each needle so I am going to knit a plain round before I do one more decreasing round. And then after that, we'll see how many more we need to alternate. I'm probably just going to do that and not try to uh, decrease any more quickly than that, you know, by decreasing every single round. Um, that will close up the toe, obviously, much more quickly. But I'm not sure I want to do that. I want, I want the white section to be, you know, large enough to be somewhat proportional to the rest of the sock. I mean, I don't think it's going to be this wide. Um... But we'll see, and if you want to knit a little bit more than that and make your toe a little longer and knit two plain rounds, plain rounds between the decreases, you could certainly do that because you're the boss. And you just have to mess with it a little bit and see if you like the way it looks. Knitting tiny little ornaments like this is good practice for just being in charge of your own thing and learning to do what you think looks best. Okay, now I'm back to the beginning of my round. And, you know, at any point you can, actually, I'm probably going to take a moment and stuff, take these tails and just stuff them down inside. All right, I only have four stitches on each needle, or I have eight stitches total. So now, I think, given how wide this is, I think I'm going to knit one more plain round, one more decrease round, and then I'm going to be done. When I do that final decrease round, I'm probably just going to knit two together all the way around and decrease quickly. So then I'll only have four stitches left. All right, I just have four stitches left on my needle and I've uh, broken or cut the yarn and put it on a smaller sized darning needle or tapestry needle. That So I'm just gonna go in under as if to purl and pull my tail through and cinch it up. So it is gonna make a little tiny, kind of a pointy elf-ish sock. I'm okay with that. Turn my work, do the same thing on the other side.
All right. Okay, now what I'm going to choose to do is go around those four stitches that I can see here, and I'm going to do that one more time just to run that through securely. And there you go. And then I'm going to go down into the center here, into the center of my sock with the tail. Oops. If you can find the exact center of those four stitches, that would be good. There we go. You just run your needle down. I'm going to go down into the white, just so if there's a little tiny tail that happens to stick out after I'm done running this down in, um, it won't be noticeable. Okay, and then you just want to trim that and be, and you're done. Isn't it cute? Now, you can do whatever you like for an ornament hanger. You could do a little crochet chain and then just tie it on and secure it. Or you could um, simply use one of these tails if you wanted to. So I'll leave, I'll leave that up to you. You could knit an I-cord and you could pick up some stitches across the top here and knit an I-cord. Um, whatever you think. So there you have it. I'm pretty pleased with my tiny sock. <laughs> you can see, um, I'm going to say it's about an inch and a half high and maybe an inch and a quarter or so this way. It's pretty tiny and cute. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. They're a little bit addicting. They only take an hour and a half or so to make, maybe a little longer. A lot of fun, a good way to use up all your tiny little sock yarn scraps. Be sure to so show me photos of your tiny socks in the Ravelry group. So join me over there. That's where all the knit along chatter is going along, plus the weekly giveaway prizes. Now this last week I gave away one of the Ann Buds handy gauge rulers. Now these are kind of handy and I might do that again. Um, these are pretty cool. Let me get a piece of paper so you can see. What the deal is here is it's clear and it has all these little V's on there, but the V's are what you line up with the V of your knit stitch. So instead of trying to use the little window in a standard gauge ruler and trying to count all the little V's and your eyes go a little crossways and wonky, you just match up what a, match up the V's and it tells you how many stitches per inch you have. So on a light colored yarn, the V's appear to be black. And then on darker yarn, there is a white, a light colored V. So you can see that that, and then there's a standard ruler on the side. Super handy and easy to mail. So that's what I gave away last week. I might put that up again, I might not, we'll see. So join the conversation over in the Ravelry group. The link is down below and show me your tiny socks or whatever ornaments you're choosing to knit this time. All right, thanks for watching.